Hey, what's up, guys? It's Chris here, Manifest, and I am on the phone, or I guess the, the video chat here, with a good friend of mine and producer, Seth Mosley, um, who has co-written with me so many songs. He did Fighter, he did Pushover, he did my song Pray, he did so many of my um, big hit songs, and he's also produced for big artists from Skillet to um, for King and Country and so many others that we're going to talk about. And me and him are just going to do a quick little interview and share some secrets. And we have a really special training that we want to invite you to as well at the end of it. So, hey, welcome, buddy. How you doing? I'm great, my friends. Been another busy day in the music business, as I'm sure it has been with you. Yeah, man. Where are you coming back from? You look like you're coming back from the country music television or something. Yeah, just had a, had a great meeting up there on Music Row at uh, CMT's Country Music Television um, band that we produced called Smithfield was doing a live performance there. So whenever they're doing that type of stuff, it's always good to swing by and just say hey to people. And yeah, just really, really just kind of cheer them on. Awesome, man. Awesome. And for those of you listening, like I kind of shared a few of your you know, stats and stuff like that. But could you just like, sh like, I don't even know how many like Grammys you've won and like how many artists you've really worked with. Give, give them the, the Coles notes version. Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. And um, it's one that we get a lot. So I don't just have my stats memorized just out of vanity, but I have it out of <laughs> um, my marketing guy always tells me it's stuff I need to know. So yeah, uh, yeah. At the, at the point of us chatting, we've got, um, I believe, I've written 800 songs. Um, our company has, between me and our other producers and writers, we've got four Grammy awards. Yeah. Um, several, several, several Dub awards. Had a Billboard number one producer of the year back in 2013. Uh, CSAC number one songwriter of the year. And over 25 number ones at the point of us speaking today. Dude, so that's very, very thankful. Dude, that is awesome. And that is so inspiring. And, you know, we met in around 2011 on tour. And so we're almost about the eight, nine, almost 10 years ago now. And there's a quote I love by Tony Robbins that says, you know, people overestimate what they can get done in a year and they underestimate where they can be in a decade and what they can get done. And you're kind of approaching that. And me and you met on tour where we were both slogging it out, opening for a band, um, trying to sell merch, trying to grow our music careers. You were in a band called Me In Motion. I didn't even know you. I didn't know you were starting to do the songwriting. And, um, and then you transitioned from, from slogging it out on the road to, to writing songs. Do you want to share just a little bit how you went from – you know, beating yourself up on the road like I was doing and, uh, and, and, and now transitioning to songwriting and how that's changed your life. <laughs> yeah, it, it has been. I mean, songs, you, you hit the nail on the head. Songs have been the thing that's taken me around the world. It's been the thing that has changed my life. Um, took me on tour in the first place, right? Uh, it's how we got to met. I met my wife through it. Yeah. Um, but in the process of trying to pursue the artist path, I figured out – um, about three years in that where I am meant to be is not that at all. I'm not, I'm not the guy at the front of the stage doing flips off the riser or anything like that. Yeah. Um, I struggled with it a lot, honestly. It, we, we, towards the end of my artist career, we started having some success at radio, but by then I was just so done with it. Yeah. Um, it, I was tired of just, honestly feeling like I was kind of failing at it like in and I had a band that I was supposed to be taking care of and providing for and I had all these family members and friends and people that had supported me and I just felt like I was like letting them down I was just failing them yeah and um it just is not a good feeling so when I got a chance to write and produce for um a band called Newsboys which was a band that I grew up listening to I just had to jump on it because it seemed like a, just such a no brainer. Like this was a door that was open that I needed to run in, run, run through. Yeah. And um, that ended up turning into their born again record that ended up being a gold record. And I just had no idea how huge it was going to be at the time, but it was kind of a great way for me to phase out of doing the artist thing and 
it was in that time that I figured out what the power of a hit song is. Yeah. Um, yeah. A hit song was what gave me the freedom to be able to get off the road. It's what paid my bills to be able to get off the road and just to, to do this thing full time. And um, a hit song had put the newsboys back on the map. Cause like they had, they were a massive band and then their singer left and then nobody knew if it was going to last or not. Um, right. Michael Tate came back, but then this one hit song put him back on the map. So yeah. um, I'm just really thankful to have been a part of co-writing and producing that song. Um, and it was really then that I, that I learned about the power of a hit. So I've been focused ever since then on hit songs, like whether it's me writing them or producing them or helping our artists or writers or our academy students write them. That's what I'm just trying to get through to people's heads is like, you, you have no idea what the power of a hit song can do in terms of changing your career from crawling to crushing, like yeah. virtually, virtually overnight. Yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. And um, before I forget, guys, we are doing a free training, a free webinar uh, this week that you can click the link below to sign up for. And Seth's going to dive so much more into that. But dude, you know what's amazing is that you said that, you know, you can pursue the, the artist path or the songwriter path. And literally when I met you, I had a hit song. It was Avalanche and it just blew up and it was crazy. All of a sudden I'm getting calls from bands. I'm getting calls from managers, you know, like the label wants to take me out for dinner and like, it just changed everything. But you know, what's interesting, like, and as the artist, I felt like that, well, that means I have to tour. And now looking back, because, you know, I've lived a little bit and I've got some experience. Looking back, I didn't necessarily have to tour. I wanted to, to an extent, but that, I thought I had to. And really, I could have just written another hit song and, and focused on that and using what I call leverage, leveraging the radio, leveraging music videos to get out there as opposed to just pounding it out because some of those tours were great like that one tour was actually pretty good for me we did well on merch but but there's there's smarter ways to do it and um and and i really love uh the path you've taken and it's inspired me to the point where i've officially just this year i'm, I'm more focusing on, on songwriting as well and seeing the, the, the benefits from that but um dude you you are um you're really gifted at songwriting i'm always blown away at how you take my ideas and um you know turn it around and i've seen you work with other people and it just blows me away and just all these songs that you've written you're going to be diving into it on the webinar and um you're going to be going into all your secrets and more of your story so i don't want to spoil anything else but before we leave um and guys click that link below sign up for this because you don't want to miss this seth is the real deal He's changed my life. He's helped so many people, and he's so generous, um, and he's humble <laughs> as well, too. Um, but what's, uh, what's one songwriting tip that you can leave for, for artists, uh, one that you're not going to share the, the, the webinar as well, too, but just that they can um, walk away with? Because you, you see so much. You see probably really bad songs, and you see, like, like one of the, what's one of, like, the number one things that artists, you know, can improve in their songwriting or a tip? <laughs> Yeah, that's a great question. Um, and, and we, yeah, like you said, in our, in our free training, we're going to be dissecting what makes a hit song a hit song. Um, we're going to be diving into what we kind of call the hit song formula, and it really is a formula. Yeah. So my tip to leave you guys with today, whoever's watching this, is to, to pull out a notepad and find one hour literally just one hour and, and a notepad. You can turn your phone off, put it on airplane mode. And I want you to do not just passive listening, but I want you to do active listening. Good. So here's what I mean. Um, I want you to flip on whatever genre you want to be. Like, let's say you want to be the next uh, Cardi B or the next uh, Keith Urban in country or, or the next, um, you know, the next manifest in, in rock and hip hop. Um, you, you pull out, you know, their top hits on Spotify and listen actively for one hour and make notes. What are the patterns of the songs you're doing? What is, what, what is, uh, notice things like rhyme scheme. Um, are they using consistent rhyme scheme? Uh, look for repetition in their writing. Are they using repetition? Look for energy levels. Like, uh, is verse one here? Is chorus here? Is verse two here? Like, how do they, like, you can literally draw an energy line throughout the course of the song and listen to what kind of lyrics are they writing. So mm -hmm. 
boil all of that into just just notes there's no right science to how to do it but i just love to encourage people to do active listening because i bet a lot of the people watching this have never done that before they just let yeah. songs go by and they don't realize that wow these things are a lot of them are kind of checking the same boxes yeah and so that's my encouragement is see what similarities you can find in some of your favorite hits some of your favorite artists and I think that'll be a good primer for the uh, free web class. And we're going to be diving into three specific uh, kind of frameworks within a hit song. So active yeah, I was taking notes, dude. It, 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 it was awesome. So like, guys, you do not want to miss this. It's people would pay for this. Um, it's so good. And, and I was taking notes and uh, getting to hear your story too. It was, it was really Yeah, and, and that may not, that may not seem like a songwriting tip, but it so is like, you have to know, yeah. like you've got to have, I always say creativity thrives the best when there are a set of boundaries whether that's a time boundary, like maybe you have four hours and you give yourself four hours for a co-write and you go in with a friend and you're like, okay, by the end of this four hours, we've got to have this thing finished. That's a very real boundary. Yeah. Um, genres are very real boundaries. So like you can't just go shoot a, a gun, uh, like a, an arrow into the air and have nothing you're aiming at. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's why, it's, it may not seem like, seem like a songwriting tip, but it so is. And it's so important that if you want to take this thing to the next level, you need to know what are the people who are doing who are already successful and not copy them, but, be, but glean influence so that you can then apply some of those tricks and techniques to your writing. I love it, man. I love it. Well, hey, guys, make sure you click that link below. And um, we look forward to seeing you on the training. Awesome, dude.